Wow, that's a really awesome honor. I didn't expect that at all. So we're not talking retirement. We're not talking death, right, John? Just, <laughs> just double checking. <laughs> <laughs> other than a, a few limps and a new hip. Um, it, was, it was really fun because this last week we've been talking about what about the next 40 years? You know, what does God have in charge for us for the next 40 years? You know, when I started this program, I, I didn't even know I was starting a program. Um, and, and little did I know that, you know, 40 some years later, in fact, we have had a few people walk into my office within the last month and a couple of them are here tonight. It says, Carolyn, I went to Mexico with you back in 1963. We just, Ron and I were sitting down like a bunch of bumbles last week trying to really record when in the world does this thing really start? And it was really hard to put a pinpoint on it because uh, it just started when I walked onto this campus and started, hey, you guys want to go to Mexico with me? So the one thing I've learned is it's, it's not Carolyn. It really isn't, and I, and I think you've always heard me say this, is this, you know, I just get, I just get to be the fortunate person that gets to stand up and, and, and be the person that's supposedly in charge and the boss, but man, it would never have happened if it wasn't for the, the Mexico Outreach staff. It would never have happened if it wasn't for all you amazing volunteers that have come along, and some of you for 20, 30, and 40 years. And this, this never would have happened some of the churches have been coming with us from day one. And it's just exciting, even at year 40 here, to see new churches come. And they're so excited, they can hardly count, wait to count for the next five to ten years they plan to come. And this is really all of our ministry. And uh, I just feel really blessed and, 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 in a way, a little bit awkward to be receiving all this wonderful stuff. But, uh, man, thanks. Thanks for being a part of this. And thanks for all that's done. And, I think the greatest joy for me is to hear some of these testimonies, uh, to hear someone that accepted Christ. And, and Fernando, thanks for just sharing. You're here, this kid in the village and accepts Christ and makes it go and ends up on staff, and now he's doing crazy, bizarre things. And, or this church, uh, you know, Village Christian that was down here this week with, with 95 kids. I followed you through the border. I know you were there. You know, I had to wait while you all walked through the immigration line. And, Gosh, just story after story. I think that's what blesses me the most. You'll always hear me say that, um, and, and, and I feel this so strongly, the greatest thing that ever happened to Carolyn Coons was as a 16-year-old girl, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. And I loved it when we're sitting down there just this week, Ron, in Mexico, and, and you would ask these students, how would you like to find Jesus Christ? And see one by one, you know, here and here, every day, one kid stands and finds Jesus Christ. And I'm sitting there, and every time I find a kid standing there asking Jesus Christ on a mission trip, they go down to serve Jesus, and they find Jesus. Is that weird? But on a mission trip, and I think, man, they got their whole life ahead of them. And in Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, God says, I have a plan for your life. And as a young kid accepting Christ as, as the Lord and Savior, I almost didn't even know what that meant. But all of a sudden, I knew that I had a reason to live as a junior in high school. For the first time, I had a reason to live. And then when God implanted that verse in me, he says, Carolyn, I have a plan for your life. My plan is, you know, I've come to give you a purpose and I've come to give you a hope, just like he's given to every one of us and every one of those kids that just found Jesus this week under listening to Ron. And then we just realize that, we, that God just says, just take it one step at a time. And, and the fact that I uh, ended up here at Azusa Pacific University is just a miracle in itself. But uh, I thank my youth pastor, Louie, for taking me on a mission trip as a brand new Christian. Um, actually, 51 years ago. Happy started going 52 years ago, so she beat me by a year. 51 years ago, my youth pastor you know, said that uh, he wanted to take the youth group on a mission trip, and, and, he, and he got all these churches together, and off we go down to, to Mexico. Man, I thank my youth pastor for that, because I caught that spirit. I didn't know that because I went on, 75 of us went on a trip a couple hundred miles below the border over Easter. I didn't know that, 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 that I would catch some kind of a spirit along with everybody else, and, that, and then, man, I walk onto this Azusa Pacific University campus, 
God, six, uh, 48 years ago, John, we keep counting those years, 48 years ago I walked onto this campus. And you know, I thank God for becoming a Christian. I thank God for Louie. I thank God for a church that I was in for three and a half years and invested their life. But man, do I thank God for this university. Because it, it, they had that same passion that I had. I learned so much walking onto this campus as a student. I found out there were professors that believed in Carolyn Coons. They believed in me. And they saw abilities in me I didn't even see. I just knew all I wanted to do was serve God. And God said, take it one step at a time. So I took it one step at a time. And as we begin to grow this program here at the university, and man, I remember years later, John, uh, as this program really uh, was, you know, we're taking six and seven and 8,000 kids a year to Mexico and, and, and through the Office of World Missions and all the other amazing programs we've got going here at Azusa Pacific, I had eight different job offers from universities uh, wanting me to come to their school and transplant what I had done here. And I knew that uh, I never fit at Liberty University because I wasn't willing to, uh, you know, make my skirts longer. And, and I knew that, <laughs> and I had to tell them that, you know, and follow up. Well, and it even, even uh, Clyde Cook called me down to Biola. He says, Carolyn, I want to talk to you. And he called me into his office. And I love Biola. I have a degree from Talbot Seminary. And uh, just great ex seminary experience. And, and, man, I want you to come to Biola and do what you did, uh, you're doing up there at Azusa. And I had to tell my beloved friend, along with all the other universities, here's what I said. I said, you know what? Azusa Pacific University is a unique place. And I'm just not sure I would have the freedom to do at U University what APU has allowed me to do. I mean, you know, it, it has been crazy years. And we have just really, you know, pushed the mark. And we have, and John, for a lot, Ron was my boss for years. I've had wild bosses. Ron was my boss for years. John was my boss for years. And, and, and man, we really pushed the envelope in some of the things we did. And it was amazing to watch this university just open up their arms and let us go to that next level. And so I really feel that, you know, when God talks about he has a plan for our life, really we realize the miracle of that as we look back and see all those different things that God had done in our lives. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Just like, Ron, God's taken your life, and you end up being the you know, president of HCJB and doing this, traveling all over the world. Or Dave Johnson is over here. We Ridge Burns and Oberketty. All of us, that God has had such an amazing plan on all of our lives. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank Amelia. Amelia and Horace, man. Man, standing down there, and, and I remember looking at her face. It's just like it just happened yesterday. And I said, you know, would you be over to letting? Uh, I have I'm, I have no idea how many you know will you let, who'll be coming, but would you like to like us to come and stay here in Cornavaca? And I'll never forget Amelia and Horace without even taking a breath. Yes, and it's been a great partnership. And Amelia, I mean, we love you, Amelia, and thanks for, for being here tonight. And, and for the, 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 the ministerial association down there that sets up all of our ministry sites, they're here tonight. Man, it's just a, an amazing group. And by the way, I want to, you know, we, t we thanked Bob for helping us with our banquet tonight, but we also want to thank Denise Gleason while we're all down in Mexico. Denise is up here putting this whole banquet and all the decorations t together for us. So thank you, Denise. <laughs> I want to thank Happy Dean, my friend, for the last 50 years. We met in 1960 when she was working in Mexico and I was down there on a mission trip and we really didn't like each other. Because she saw a strong woman in me, and I saw a strong woman in her, and we weren't used to seeing each other. You know, people were. <laughs> and man, God has given us such a great friendship. And I want to thank Happy for starting a prison ministry. And if you, 
And I'm telling you, I had no idea what an amazing job she would do in the year that they had riots in the prison and APU put word out all over this campus. And by the very next day, we had a whole big truckload of stuff when they had riots in the prison and they burnt the, uh, most of the prison down. And we were taking down um, clothing and blankets and we were the only group the prison let in because the prison was on hold for, because of riots for 17 days. We were the, f Azusa Pacific University was the first group that they let into the prison and to deliver all this, these, these goods to them. And a lot of it had to do with uh, the amazing ministry that Happy has had to do down there. And so I, I just thank her. And then I think of that, and it's already been mentioned, but we, you see, this leads to then getting into La Granja Boys Prison and finding this little Mexican kid you saw in that prison and this little boy that uh, Antonio Hernandez Sanchez Garcia, and then he became a Coons. So I adopted this little Mexican boy into my life. And man, what a journey that's been. You think it's been tough here at Azusa with me, John. You should try and adopt Tony. But the amazing thing, and then to think that, I mean, here, I, yeah, most of you know my story. I, I, I came out of this abusive alcoholic home, and I really don't have any family. And God gave me a family. And then God brought Letty. Oh, man, talk about a gift from God. Tony's wife, and I got four grandkids. So I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I've never been married, I work at Azusa Pacific <laughs> University. And I thank Gail Tucker for the last 18 to 20 years. <laughs> Gail has quietly, behind the scenes, put together the most amazing medical ministry, and Team Luke. And, and the First Aid Center, and has recruited doctors, and we've had some of the most amazing clinics with literally thousands of people getting free medical. And it's all been done behind the scenes with Gail Tucker. And uh, Gail, man, you're great, and we love you, and thanks for all these years of commitment that you've done. Now that came Dr. Cepeda. I was hoping he'd be here tonight, but he's on call. He's probably delivering babies someplace, but We've got Jason here and Dr. Cepeda's daughter, Kelly Cepeda, and they have put together their whole family. They, now we have a special needs clinic in, in, in uh, Mexicali, and special needs kids, that, kids that are so handicapped, they've been living on the floor of some of their homes, and they've been hidden from society, and these guys come along, they build a special needs clinic, and out of the woodwork, 20, 30, 40, 50 kids who have been hidden are coming to the clinic and are getting physical therapy and training and educated for the first time in their lives. Little did we know when we first started these programs, but these, all these ministries would come out of that. All these kids would come out of, all these young kids would accept the Lord and on and on the list goes. So I, I don't want to miss anybody, but I can't do it. But man, all I can say is I humbly say thank you Thank you, thank you. And most of all, thank you, Jesus, for allowing all of us to be a part of this. And thank you, Azusa Pacific and John, for just probably one of the top honors I could ever receive. Thank you very much.